What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of RimWorld and this is episode 6 or part 2 of the replay. Uh, put a little path there you can see so they can get around. I could have put a door in, yes I could have and probably I should have done. Just trying to clear up some items on the map. One thing I hate about the main map is the clutter. I, it's It really isn't relevant for the gameplay so to speak though some of it can be used as cover. Um, but I just don't like the actual map having crap everywhere. I like to try and collect as much as possible and then that resource is in my storage. Should it be resource? If it's not, then of course it's just crap and I like to delete it. So the ancient stuff as it's called, which is basically our time. So cars, trucks, buildings, old turrets. You have to destroy that by shooting at it or melee attacking it. We will get to that, but that takes forever. In the meantime, just getting some stone blocks in storage so we actually have the ability to make stone blocks uh, and the bricks to do some flooring or some walls that aren't burnable. Our base currently is just uh, a giant fire pit waiting to happen. You can see though that I have extended it out now. So the research room is much bigger, though empty, because we haven't yet added the actual facilities to it. Uh, though I have added the lights to make sure that that is done. You can see at the bottom there, Double, triple wall building to the kill box. The idea being that they should funnel into that and I can control it. Now, the size of the kill box is dependent on how many people are coming. You want to be able to funnel them into a specific area where your defences are, whether it be towers, Teslas, be people, bombs, grenade, whatever. You funnel them into the same area, but you don't want to funnel them to a point that the bottleneck is, well, the saying, the bottleneck because you don't want it to take three and a half hours for the 300 people to walk through. So experimentally, you want to start off with doing it that way, make the gap as small as possible, but increase it incrementally as you increase your defenses so that your defense line, your kill box can handle the volume that is coming into it. If it can't, then you of course shrink that bottleneck to slow them down. If it can easily do it, then you make it larger to speed up the process. And that's what I'm going to do. Raid 7 coming in now, or Wave 7. Looks like 5 people. Plus 3 elsewhere to give us 8. So, as it stands at the minute, all of us have to line up. We don't have any defensive buildings yet. You can see the line there. The planning lines, they are my just... Well, planning lines. To make sure I keep it symmetrical and try and um, build it out best I can. Now, as it ha as it happens, the way that they're coming in is the awkward problem. They're coming in from that left-hand side through the caves. They're actually up on top of our barricade where my guys are hiding. I say hiding, that's the wrong word, but yeah, defending. Um, too quick. So we need to try and block that off so that they come in. We want them to basically come round and straight on at us. So that as soon as the range of the weapons is allowed... They start fighting. The guys here, especially the melee, have a massive advantage because they're already close upon us. And you can see there, then we have these sort of problems. Now, I am running around like an idiot, also known as Kitin. And you'll do this in any game, right, where you've got range, especially with run and gun. Now, without run and gun, this wouldn't work, the mod. Um, but it does with, with that. But just remember, if you are kiting like this, make sure you click for them to move long before you want them to because they always seem to have a delay in responding to your move command so you can see here i'm going to hide behind these these do count the stones there the chunks do count as cover for the guys obviously are melee so it doesn't actually matter now we'll push for a flea just like so a couple of excellent rewards there that's nice to see and that's Arco Tech items or food medicine there. So, I mean, we'll take the Arco Tech items only because I don't know what they are. Though in reality, and moving forward, I likely won't take them again. Because what you get is, I don't really use them. You get like psychic soothes and things like that. Or you can sell them for about four to 500 silver each. Which is probably about 2,500 silver. In the future, I will just take the food and medicine. But with that done... We can get back to base building or at least defense building 
and wait for wave nine. Hopefully we'll have some form of kill box or much better structure of a kill box before wave 10, which of course will be the boss wave. Wave nine was uneventful, but did allow us to get a kill box, air quotes, completed to restrict them in the bottleneck that I mentioned. I've also doubled up that wall there, you can see. Boss wave is in 3.7 days and it has got the two times modifier. So whatever it is that they're sending, it's double. Now there you can see the kill box as I have built it. The doors on the left and right hand side are just to help my guys get around it without having to walk through those moats over and over again. The moats are very good for slowing down the enemies and yourselves as long as everything else actually, animals, robots, the like. The bottom part there where you can see the chambers, the, the idea is that they will funnel into there and because it is one block wide, they can't then walk past each other. So you get a single file. The idea then is they'll come through the center to attack us in single file. Now, I do expect because we're using ranged weapons that the walls will get pummeled and likely open up to a couple of blocks. But for a s starter kill box, it is definitely the best way I've found so far. And again, that single file thing will become a problem if you continue to leave it like that. Because when you get massive raids, it will just take too long. It will be too slow. So you will open that up. But for now, while we wait, especially with a two times modifier, it's going to be more than I've ever had before. And the hardest challenge we've had so far with this reset so we just need to make sure that we are going to allow them to come in slowly and not lose any of our guys two prisoners currently working on of course recruiting those to increase our populace and you can see the lab there the research room is doing nicely so there is a crafting bench for clothing the smeltery and the smithy an advanced research table with two standard ones and then the terminal for the robot traders and a couple of the cabinets which increase the speed of everything in there pretty much uh, not the research so that's done with other buildings but but certainly for the crafting buildings um, and the second one is looking like it's being built but probably lacking components at a guess hospitals up and running made larger as you can see i pushed that out four beds no need to make it any bigger than that i don't think maybe six if you've got enough beds for the amount of colonists you've got, you should be okay. If you plan on helping a lot of innocents, traders, etc., then you may want to make it a bit bigger. But I don't really. Or at least I do, but if my guys are all using the hospital beds, then I wouldn't. So I will only make my hospital as big as the colonists I have. And then I'll kit it out as best I can. I will go full tilt with silver floor, silver everything for the infection reducer. And then, of course, vital monitors, the surgical lamps, the surgical kits. Once they're researched, they will all be in there and that will be one hell of a hospital. The only thing then left is for the doctors to be trained up, which, of course, I will rotor the guys working as a doctor to make sure everybody is a decent doctor. Because by end of the game, obviously, like I said, I want to have OP researchers and OP doctors. Just looking at the ideologies for each of the colonists to see where their moods are failing to make sure I have what we need. Now, some of them, specifically the leaders and the religious leaders, need special clothing. So I can look at making that. We have the tailor bench already. We just need to make sure we've got the, clo the, the cloth. A burqa is required for the religious guy and then the leader seems to want some sort of fancy mask. Of course, in the future, they can all be replaced by prestige armor because it looks like prestige armor basically covers everyone. Um, and of course, you want them to be armored because they're still going to be fighting. And the last thing you need is them to get shot in the face mask and die. So if you can put them in actual armor that they're still happy with, that is good. There are some distinct ideologians within our group i am slowly going to start converting those over to ours so that i don't have to have fancy rooms and processes for different religions i want to just keep it nice and simple yet another trade coming through trying to buy as much as i can you can see what is that Ten thousand silver that's um 
some of the architect stuff the components obviously always get components and advanced components where needed and then sell off all the crap you don't need it's part of trading it's what we do and it's what i do storage facilities usually get over loaded obviously if you ever was involved in season one you know i had a lot of problems with traders luckily i fixed that um, there was a mod conflict that's been resolved so now i do actually get traders and this is how i like to do now usually with the big waves it's a good thing because you get loads of weapons and loads of armor now although they only sell for say i don't know anywhere from four to maybe 10 silver each it soon adds up but when you've got waves coming in of three four and five hundred potentially i've seen a 450 uh, this is future me of course talking um, then you get too much crap and you can't store it so at that point i decided to just probably destroy it all smelt it all or severely filter it out now of course with the industrial mod that can all be automated but we are way off that for now so we're going to sell everything we can that we don't need grab everything that we do need and just use the trade for exactly what its purpose is intended to be Okay, so on the right hand side, I don't know if you noticed there, there was a, a building where the grave is. That's where all the corpses are put. Now, the reason I put a wall around it, and I would suggest everybody was the same, none of the guys like to see corpses. Well, unless they are bloodthirsty, I think it's called, or psychopaths. And walking into a grave site where all of the corpses are out and you can see them will cause you a lot of problems with mood debuffs. Yes. Yes. It happened. Now... I don't know why my guys like to go into the insect area when they're not supposed to. They're set on safe, but there was a couple of glitches where some overrid it. Now, I think it's because where the insects are mining, if they mine a bit of the mountain out and that area wasn't covered, your guys can still go there. It's like if you set home for somewhere on the other side of the map and there's a fire, you're colonists can leave the home area to walk into a different home area which be warned can be quite tragic now i am sending my guys in thinking oh this will be fine i'll just send these guys in we'll rescue the guy here and of course then we'll shoot and kill out all the insects insects really don't die that easy and in melee range they are uh, will will batter you so be warned um we've got one guy here so let's rescue that guy and get it no obviously i didn't follow my own example i decided to shoot them and then we get into one giant cluster b yeah so kiting's great but the as i said they they just refuse to just walk they have to stand still like idiots and get into melee combat and then they won't just leave now you can set them to fire at will and turn it off but they're still stupid I don't know why they do it like this. It's just, I mean, it's the its the mechanic of the game. So let's not pretend that it's not how it's supposed to be. And it's my fault. Because it is my fault. Um, I bit off more than I could chew. And it makes a bit of a mess. But we'll slowly back off. Anybody that needs it, we will rescue. As long as no one dies. Which I can't imagine it's going to be too traumatic. The good thing is when they're down, the insects leave them alone. So if the guys that are down, if you just leave them for now reset until the insects reset and then you can go and rescue them so nothing too exciting happened we're now pushing to wave 15 of course i've brought you back because it is a boss wave just working on the thing here you can see i have actually managed to get rimatronics up and running as well in those last times now if anything is new to you guys and you want to see sort of a, a a video over the specific mod like rimatronics which i will use a lot Please let me know in the comments and I will do one. I'm not just going to throw out videos for the sake of it because uh, I'm trying to reduce the amount of videos I post to make it that you guys can keep up. But if you want to see that. Now, of course, immediately I go for the Teslas. I go for them first because they are the easiest and quickest and cheapest defense weapons in Rimatronics to start with. The Obelisks lasers are the strongest I think, I'm pretty sure, yeah, they are the strongest. Um, and they have the bigger range, but 
they are very expensive and take a lot longer to do you can also put some barbed wire down i do have a trade caravan in here as well so it is a bit cheesy i didn't put them there i haven't got um the mod in to tell them where to go so they just go where they like the caravan spot is there but that is not what the traders go to so if you see as soon as they come out and get within range there we go the teslas will kick in and electrocute them now unfortunately electric would jump between people it doesn't in this they are single target in fact the teslas and the obelisks although very powerful are all single target the teslas got teslas are fantastic yeah and you can see the traders are ruining my um ruining my kill box there with grenades however we can reduce the next wave should we wish. Some stone drops, pawns, join. I don't really want extra people. And then leather. Hopefully I go for the half raid. Yep, so that makes the next raid half as powerful. You can see the four bits of wall there that are lasted. No, well, okay. Two bits of wall there that have lasted are the upgraded variants. Now, they are very expensive, so I'm not going to build them again. They require hyperweave, and I don't have much of that. We did... P that because of the traders, I'm not going to lie. But I don't think they would have got through anyway. Again, the testers would have done most of the work. And the testers are fantastic against the mechanoids because they stun them every time they attack. So they do damage and they stun. Now, I do have a mass mining session going on. Using the mining tool where it does these squares, you can set the size of it, but I don't really care. And I've just gone across all of the mountain where it's not going to cause me a problem. And just getting the guys to do some mining there. And the robots where I built... Sorry, bought them from traders. Uh, they're not expensive. They're about anywhere from 1700 to 2500 each. Silver. Um, give or take. But they also do help. Now, we haven't quite got to the mining and construction ones yet. We only have, to my knowledge, the, the hauling bots. But they are obviously very important. Especially for the gravesite as well as i mentioned earlier in the episode that people that you colonists really don't like going anywhere near it well the uh, robots don't care so you can see that i've now upgraded that also four sorry three of the advanced now research tables and then the multi-analyzer next to there but of course we don't have enough resources for it yet i think we're missing gold if i'm not mistaken the bottom section is remotronics and then the top right is the production as previous uh, the same buildings as before, though we do have a machining table now as well. That we can't really do much with it apart from shred mechanoids, which is good for, I think, steel and plastic, plastic steel, but that's about it. I don't think you get components from shredded mechanoids. I don't remember, so correct me if I'm wrong. Checking a few quests. Nothing too exciting to do. I don't like going out of the base and traveling, not with Winston Waves on. If it was another one, and like the next season when we do it, and you go back to the normal storytellers, then we will travel. But with Winston Waves, it's too risky. We don't have enough time to travel. It takes a couple of days, and that means it's a couple of days to come back. Uh, before you know it, you're going to have a wave attacking your base, and you will have no one there. Now, yes, you could send out a person or two. But that's not going to do you much good for attacking or taking over an area. It's just for trading. And to be honest, we have enough traders coming to us. So I'm happy with that. Now I am going to chuck down some pod launchers. Most of the time I use these to send away my crap that I can't sell. And I send it to random, not necessarily allies, but the guys that you can ally with. If you send them free stuff, you will of course will increase your rapport with the with them and if you give them enough you'll become neutral and then likely you'll become allies and of course that will give you additional trading caravans also support should you need it again it also gives you the ability to have less attacks because if they are hostile you will get raids from them as well if there is a specific type of enemy that you don't want to fight then ally with them and you won't have to of course the pirates and the cannibals and the mechanoids you can't ally with so they will always be enemies so if you don't like them <laughs> then suck it up cupcake or turn them off and just bringing you back for the first baby of this season and felicity is now giving birth to a little bambino bit of screaming going on we all know what childbirth's like luckily in the game it's not as gross as real life by gross i mean like blood and stuff 
obviously having a baby is a beautiful thing. Um, and you've got the doctor there and the father there. The rest of the people apparently don't care, which, I mean, I suppose that's real, right? And you're having a baby in hospital, you don't get randoms coming from all over the place just to watch. And voila, there we go, a baby girl called Booker. Now, I don't know if anybody else gets the reference, um, but since I've been playing this, every time I see Booker, I want to put the, a T at the end for Booker T, the wrestler. I don't know why. I think it's the only time I've ever known the name Booker. Um, certainly not a very common name in England. But, yeah. So, although every time I say Booker in my head, I say Booker T. But I'm going to leave it as Booker, just because, yeah. And luckily I prepared for the baby to be born, so put down a jade cot, because why not? I had some spare jade anyway. So little baby Booker can live and be happy in there, in the same room as the parents. Of course, these rooms do need to be significantly extended, but... Before we move any fo further forward, I am going to name the baby after one of my members. One and only members. But nevertheless, thank you very much. So we are going to change the baby Booker to Joanne Wood. Joanne Wood, thank you for being a member to my channel. I appreciate it very much. And I hope you continue to enjoy the content. And I also hope I keep you alive. Uh, yeah, I put Booker in there as well because we want to make sure that we get the lineage, but Joanne Wood Booker is the first baby of the game, so that is what I will do with the members. Any additional babies will be named after members, though, of course, it's probably obvious, but I do only have one, so yeah. Now, with a few extensions, you can see there on the left-hand side, I have thrown in the storage for the stones to allow us to convert them into blocks when we have the ability to do that. Now, we do have it. I can just chuck down a stonemason immediately, but I'm not doing that until we have a lot more space. And by space, I mean a lot more spare time, sorry. Doubling up the battery storage, extending the base out into the mountain. It took a lot of digging, so as you can see, I've left those walls, the random slits of walls. That's to stop the ceiling from caving in. Uh, and I'm just going to do some rough estimations here on how I want the buildings to look and how big they need to be. You can see a storage there of the clothing and some weapons. That is not going to cut it moving forward, but it is okay for now. The PPCs, which are those large-looking batteries with the red lines on them, they are the batteries that are specifically for Rimatronic weapons, and they discharge those batteries to fire the weapons. You can use the power from them to power the base. You cannot use the power from any other batteries to power the Rimatronic weapons. So make sure they don't run out, otherwise your defences are useless. The little utility towers there, or defence towers there at the end as well, they are stun towers. So the idea is that if anybody breaks through to the line before they go into melee combat with my guys hiding behind the sandbags, they will be stunned. Giving my guys the extra chance to shoot them in the face before they have to punch them in the face. We are, however, at time now, or slightly over actually. So I am going to end the episode here and we'll have to continue in the next one. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode and if you did, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more. Also, drop me a like if you don't mind. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome. As always, take care. Goodbye.